Hello everyone, and on today's episode of Motor House, we're going to be finding out why this freshly installed V8 is running quite so badly. Hello everyone, welcome back, and as you can see from my surroundings, we are now comfortably ensconced within the garage and workshop of my old man. And I'm very pleased about that because today the snow's coming down, it's below freezing outside. I would not want to be working on the driveway today. Now, if you've been following the previous videos, you'll know that we've spent the last few months converting Lara, my 110 Land Rover here, from a diesel TDI to a three and a half litre petrol Rover V8. Just before the new year, we managed to get it up and running and managed to get a couple of hundred miles and a full tank of fuel through. So yeah, it was wonderful driving around for the first time in my own V8 Land Rover, but you know, something just wasn't right. For whatever reason, it felt absolutely gutless unless you were driving it flat out. And my word was it chewing through fuel, even for a V8 petrol. The first tank of fuel through, brace yourselves for this, 11.1 mpg. Yeah, 11. That's pretty bad, even by my standards. So clearly then, there's something wrong with this engine. And I have my suspicion. My suspicion is that when I was installing that camshaft over Christmas, when it was freezing cold and just wanted the job done, that I'd probably installed the cam with the cam timing out. So a couple of weeks back, came over here, and what do you do? You enlist the help of the person you trust the most, got the old man in, the Rover V8 guru, to lend a hand with his thoughts. So, with a dial gauge installed and some careful measurements made from the crank pulley, we began trying to look at the degrees, the timing of the cam, see where the cam was opening, where it was closing, and reference that back on a chart. And, well, yeah, my worst fears were confirmed. From doing the cam timing, from doing the investigations, the cam appears to be 20 degrees advanced which is quite a lot and probably indicates that when I fitted the cam I somehow managed to get the sprockets about a tooth out. So how do we go about fixing it? Well we're here, we're in the workshop, we've got the tools ready, what we're about to do is strip down the front end again get the radiator out, get the front slam panel out, start stripping down the front timing cover of the engine, and then we'll see exactly what's going on, and hopefully, we'll have a perfectly running Land Rover.
right, boy, what are you doing? Um, it's the messy bit. <laughs> There's absolutely no way of draining the coolant without making a god awful mess. Um, because there's no drain plug on the bottom of the rad, so it's just it's just pull the hose off and um, yeah. <sighs> Shall we have a go? So I've got the the hose clips are off the rad, and I'm going to try and dump the coolant out the bottom as best I can. But all right, let's have a go, shall we? Brace, brace yourself. Please. Brace myself. Uh, get a big screwdriver to try and help it off. And there's, there's no real clearance either, you know? Are we taking bets on if you're going to get it in the, in the bucket? <laughs> we can <laughs> take bets. We can take... Oh, I'm going to bet no. Here a bit. <clears throat> we, oh, whoop. Oh. Right. <laughs> that's cheating. <laughs> this is not how it's I intended this so to well. go. <laughs> it's going so, so well. Oh! I mean, yeah. Certainly. It's our way of doing it. Oh, I love this bit. <laughs> no. Nah. That'll do. That'll do. So we've got the front timing cover off, what you see here. So this here is the main pulley that drives the crankshaft, the camshaft even, and this below is the crankshaft. But um, something's weird in it, Dad. Well, what's your thoughts? Because the dots look yeah, the dots fine. The dots are aligned. The dots are aligned. I don't know if you can see it here. Look, there's that mark just there. Aligns with, I don't know if it will focus or not, but there's a dot below, but take my word for it, those are lined up. That's You'd agree with that, wouldn't you? Yeah, but it's not pulling, Robert. I think we should turn the camshaft backwards and tighten that chain. So what's what's your, what's your gut feeling then, Bud? Because I'm, I'm confused as heck. No, I am one. as well, but let me, I think if we turn that, that back and tighten the chain on the drive part of the chain, it might just alter how we're seeing it. Right, okay. And maybe maybe that's the problem I had in assembly yep. is that I've lined the dots up but the what the chain yep. isn't taut yeah on its pull side you see yeah because you can see that this side is extremely tight like I cannot move that but this side yeah is super slack yeah 
So, uh, yeah, let's dig in and see what's going on. Later that same evening. Okay, so the prevailing air here is is just confusion. It's just absolute confusion because when we had a look at this, the timing marks were aligned. Now, like, what's your view on it, Dad? Because it's I don't really know, bloody confusing, this, isn't it? This doesn't seem to be an original pulley to me. Well, it should. there should be an F there stamped on there, shouldn't there? Which obviously indicates front. And I don't know if you can see, there's, there's a dot that lines up on the crank and the cam pulley, but it almost seems offset, doesn't it? And conveniently, it almost seems offset roughly by the amount that we reckon the cam's out by. Absolutely. So, I just don't know, like, has this cam and pulley chain been manufactured incorrectly, or? We don't know. It might be an aftermarket one. Yeah. We just don't know. Yeah, because um, this came out, the snatch engine, because obviously we're pulling the cam out, and the timing chain and pulley looked in really good shape because it was, as you know, a low mileage rebuilt MOD engine. So I thought, let's reuse it. You know, want not, waste not. But we are beginning to think that this timing chain set itself is, is maybe the problem. So um, yeah, we're gonna dig in some more and find out what on earth is going on. All right, so as you can tell, we're indoors where things are a lot warmer, a bit more clarity on the situation. We may have an idea what on earth is going on. So if we go over to the workbench, what's the thoughts, Dad? Well, what I've done is, um, is draw a line through the timing mark and the centre of the hole. Yep, yep. Exactly 40 teeth on this gear. Exactly. So it's teeth. easy to do, isn't it? Yeah. These are 20 teeth apart, line drawn through there. Yeah. I've also taken a line through the centre of the woodruff key. Yeah slot here yeah got it yeah what i've then done is clamp mm -hmm. this steel rule down the woodruff key mark yeah okay oh. so with steel rule clamped down what what's the figures then what do we get well the steel rule clamped down and this um adjustable square uh, i've got four degrees offset which equals eight degrees of crankshaft rotation okay now it's a pressure casting. I can't see the casting being off. No, me neither. However, yeah. there is this phenolic fibre gear on here, nylon gear. Yeah. And I wonder if that is on incorrectly. Who knows? Who knows? And what about the slot as well? Like, that could be machined incorrectly, couldn't it? It could be. It looks to be in the right spot, but four degrees is not a lot. No. In terms of a machining mark. So... The only thing we can do is compare it with a couple of other gears we've got. Yeah, well, I've got some others at home and I've got a nice duplex gear set as well, so we can check that. But here's the question. We, we thought we were 20 degrees out with the cam altogether, weren't we? 20 degrees advanced, I think, is what we yes, measured it was. or thereabouts. It was thereabouts. I'm not going to commit to anything until I've seen another known gear. We can speculate all day long. Well, there you go. <laughs> You heard it here, there's non-committal from day one, but we're gonna wrap it up here, we're gonna call it a day. Um, it's time for some tasty food. I'm gonna go back home, dig my timing gears out, and we'll see you next time on another episode of Motorhouse. <laughs>